children of the night. What music they make. They're all gonna laugh at you! They're coming to get you, Barbara. Who wants that? I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash you with the... Welcome to Final Guys. And remember on the old Batman show, the episodes where Batgirl was on in the credits to the beginning, she'd swing in and kick the guy. Well, we've got Final Girl this week. <laughs> Laurel Hightower is with us. What's up, Laurel? Not too much. I can't kick anyone though, because my fucking ankle's broken. But you know, just just pretend it happens. <laughs> I just had to you... plug my mic in. I was going off the uh how the hell'd you break your ankle? It's not even a good story. I just, I just was, I was dancing with Tiny earlier and it was like fine, but apparently I need toddler supervision because later when I did a little kick stuff, when I was putting him to bed, my ankle was like, you know, you're 40, right? And just went, so yeah. That's it? Oh shit. That's it. No, and it's, but when I sprained it two years ago, I literally fell down one stair. Mm. So in my opinion, this is an improvement. Like a, a poorly executed dance step is a little less embarrassing than a uh, stare. Hmm. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so, Hightower, if you say so. Well, we're all getting old and achy, and we all needed our reading glasses this week for our main feature, which I'm probably going to mispronounce, but Salome? I don't think so. Sure. Uh, a horror movie out of Africa. So we'll get to that later. Um, we've got drinking words. Does somebody want to, uh, give the, uh, the words? Sure thing. All right. As always, thanks to Sheridan Bradford for these. Jack, your words are supernatural drug and queen. Hightower, yours are gold, Mexican, and plain. Mine are hyena, director, and chores. And the bonus words are Africa, shutter, and sign. Thank so you, we, we're on... We're on first name basis and you are Hightower. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> That's my preferred sober K. Hightower. Sounds cooler. Sober K. Speaking of sober. Laurel, I know that we're uh, bourbon buddies, but tonight I am uh, I'm going to go more on the Halloween side of things. Uh, so oh, yeah. I mean, once or that becomes available, you don't really have a choice. It's just there. This is not like the, the usual shipyard you get in the bottle. This is smashed pumpkin this there's so much pumpkin in this this one you like is it more pumpkin or is it more like spice because i gotta say pumpkin. i think this okay it's the spice part that i think i actually like hmm. yeah now that you say that i need to get myself a couple of those i haven't i haven't bought any pumpkin beers yet god damn it what am i doing yeah i was at the liquor store uh doing some errands and i accidentally walked through the uh pumpkin ale section and mm. as one yeah. does there's nothing as you can does. do at that point i've got so i have my jefferson River reserve ah. i've got my bourbon but i'm a little bit afraid to drink it because mercury's in lemonade or whatever and i didn't i just never put any stock into that but apparently it's like a big like it had well retrograde like has an effect on like communications and I have noticed the weirdest shit going on the last few days. And I'm like, I'm afraid that I'm going to drink this and say something horribly offensive and just completely tank the show, tank my career, tank I don't know, without any intention of doing so. I'm just now I'm afraid of these astrological bodies. I don't know what's going on. I have concerns. It's not in retrograde. It's in lemonade. So don't worry yeah. about it. Okay, good. Well, then You're on a show that Hunter Shea... Like, Hunter Shea's on the show. Like, yeah, you're, you're, you can't true. say anything worse than he has said. <laughs> Don't make that a challenge, man. <laughs> Plus, you're, I mean, come on. One bourbon for you? I mean, like, you bleed bourbon. That's true. It is kind of comes out my pores, so. <laughs> I sat next to you downwind. I mean, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I got a contact drunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's a proud moment for me, man. <laughs> All right, and, uh, you guys got anything to uh, announce or plug before we get going? Nope. I don't think so. Got nothing. All right, then um, I think it's time for the award-winning news segment. 
It's the news. Yay. All right. I've got mostly good news and some interesting news. First piece of news is this. This week, of course, Pearl is coming out. The sequel or the prequel to X. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to that. They just announced like today or yesterday. Uh, Ty West has been given the green light to do a sequel called Maxine. And Maxine has three X's in it. So it's going to pick up from the girl, the, the Mia Goth character from the first one who gets away at the end. Spoiler alert. That's the one I want to see. <laughs> is this is this sequel? Not not the Pearl one? Pearl is the prequel. Pearl is the prequel. Okay. Okay. That looks really good. I have not actually seen X, but Pearl looks, I don't know, there's a scarecrow in some shit. Yeah. I'm just, that's exciting. I don't know. That looks really good. I really liked X a lot. I did too. I did too. It'll definitely be on my top 10 list or whatever that would be top 13 list, but the uh, sequel. Now you're talking my language. The prequel. I'm like, <laughs> I wonder who's going to survive. Yeah. But like I said, this is like a Quentin Tarantino. He's telling a story, you know, purposely out of order. So I like it. All right. Uh, hopefully we can go see it this week and maybe maybe that'll be the main feature next week. I don't know. I don't know. We'll oh, shit. That's it. this weekend? The 16th. Oh, shit. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> There's also Barbarians crazy. out, too. Oh, and Somebody th mentioned that to me and I didn't even know what the hell it was. Also, I think maybe Tim is coming on next week with a bad movie or something. That's what that was my understanding was that oh. it was you guys were punishing Lutsky as well so oh i got something for lutsky if tim doesn't come up with something so i actually tried to pick a cheesy movie this time and i was told it wasn't allowed to i got one in the chamber whether tim picks one or not um we'll get to that the questionable news is this this just broke today there's going to be a remake trilogy of the strangers with Rennie Harlan directing. Rennie Harlan, of course, Deep Blue Sea, I think Die Hard 2, Cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. uh, Some other stuff, too. Some other that stuff. That not be mentioned. He did that found footage movie in Russia. Uh, oh, yeah. Hell's Pass? I think he did that. I like yes. that movie. Oh, I think that's on my list. Watch. Now, I like both Strangers movies. I like the first one better. Hunter likes the second one better. Uh, dude, it's been so long since I watched the original. Uh, and I only saw it the one time because I was like, God damn, that was that was rough. Yeah, it's um, very... but I, I like them both. So I I don't even know if I'd pick one without seeing them again. <clears throat> yeah, God, this... so kind. Somebody needs to give me a fucking like assignment list so that I'm not a pop culture loser just, over just, here. Just go through our show notes, for God's sakes. Oh, that's true. That's true. Um. Interesting that they are already um, green lighting a trilogy. I always feel like, are you sure that first one's going to be good? <laughs> That's an interesting call. But it's all about franchises this day. Hmm. Um, Is it going straight to streaming or anything? I don't know about that. But um, Madeline Pesch is going to star in it. I wonder if it's hmm. the kind of thing where like it it makes more sense from a financial standpoint to film them all at the same time. Like if Maybe. they're going to be like within quick succession and so they'll just end up saving. No. Yeah. I mean, if you're reusing sets and stuff for sure and locations, but plus I with mean, all this, the streaming platforms, if the first one's not that great, they still need new releases that are, have recognizable names. Yeah. I <clears throat> The thing is, the the strangers, especially the first one, that is a like a kind of famously scary movie. Um, yeah. yeah, you know. It's so sad. there's some pretty pretty big shoes to fill. And the second one has that pool scene where they're playing Total Eclipse of the Heart. Mm -hmm. So both of these movies have like a, a, a following. So you know, is Rennie Harlan up for this? 
we'll see. He's made some good movies. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess we'll find out. I it does. We've talked about this before. The series does lend to having just a bunch of different movies because it's not like they're connected. So yeah, you know, you can just even if one sucks, you just do another one with a different cast. So it would be good. Okay, now my continued mission to provide you with things to watch for the Halloween season. Our friends at Tubi will be releasing on October 21st a remake of Terror Train, which was originally starring um, Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis. Huh. Who's, it's not The Asylum again, is it? No, Jesus. it's... Um, oh, I have it here somewhere. Oh, who is it? In <laughs> Incendo. Is, is it? Really is it? Is it like a Tubi original? Do they do originals, or they just they they happen to be the platform that hit they this one? they do originals? Because uh, what the Not hell? I just watch. I just watched some other Tubi original. That Ti was a... Titanic six 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 was a Tubi original. Oh right. Okay, I forget that. Yeah, that was unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> But but that was what was fun about it. I'm still a little bit mad about those fucking endless. Oh, the shark things. side of the moon. I watched recently. That was oh, a, okay. That's that's, that's, that's got to be worthwhile, right? That's I that's mean, what makes me think. Like when they're called, it's going to be terror train in name only. <laughs> Probably. I mean, I'm glad I, they're making original stuff. I, I can't complain too much. But I I just like that they get all the obscure shit. Like I hope they don't start spending all their money on original content and Netflix themselves. Yeah, you know, I don't open Netflix for months at a time. Literally until we're watching something for the show, I never even open the app. I don't, why? Why am I paying for? It? I like that. That's become like a like a verb. The Netflix, fuck. It really has, man. They it's so disappointing. Now the last piece of news comes off the heels of last week. I mentioned that uh, Trick or Treat was coming back to the theater. Well, oh yeah. October 28th, 29th, 30th, and 31st, again at Regal Cinemas, Dawn of the Freaking Dead, 1978. At Regal? One of my all-time favorite movies coming to the, the big screen. So is that, I have, I have really got to get myself on that. Which, which storyline is that one? So, Dawn of the Dead is after Night of the Living Dead, right? And it's uh, it's the one where they go to the mall. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now, the first time I ever saw the movie, I was in high school, and I think we were trying to find. I live in Connecticut, right on the New York line, and we were like, we were looking to find a, a movie theater that was playing like the song remains the same or something like that, and we got lost. <laughs> And we just pulled into some shopping center that had a movie theater. And in one theater, they had Kentucky Fried Movie. And in the other theater, they had Dawn of the Dead. So half my friends in the car went to Kentucky Fried Movie. Me and my buddy went to Dawn of the Dead. And our lives changed. We watched it. And we're just like, oh, my God. And I'd heard about this movie. But seeing it, was like, I mean, just it, it was a life-changing moment. Also, I think you made the right choice. It's right like choice. an hour at least longer than to Kentucky Fried Movie. So our other buddies were like waiting in the car for us and just like freezing their nuts off. <laughs> Wait, I I wonder why Regal's coming out with all these. Maybe there aren't a lot of horror movies coming out in theaters. So they're maybe, maybe they fit, you know, they had that three dollar movie thing everywhere. I think it's just maybe they fit they're figuring out the Alamo model of bring back some classics and get people to come back to the theater that way. Well, because everybody went out to go see Jaws, right? Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. You know, I've thought forever about getting that Regal Pass so I can just go to the movies anytime I want and not like give a shit that it's $20 a ticket. If they keep doing stuff like this, that would make me more likely to go for sure. And you'll like this, Jack. Somebody just sent me this to my P.O. box. Oh, is that the it's, box set? Yeah. It's like I have that. Crazy. Oh, you do? Yes. Yeah, it's nuts. And you ah, gotta hang up. Don't shit. don't drop that. Like, cause you can't get that movie like anymore. Yeah, I was blown away when he sent this. He sent me um There's a like limited three or four release different versions, right? Well. What's that? 
There's like three or four versions of the movie. Yeah, right? yeah. There's four discs in the damn thing. Yeah, there's it's like crazy. the uh, like the longer cut. There's the um, what's his name, the Italian guy, um, Argento cut. There's an Argento there's... cut. Yeah, I did not know. <laughs> yeah, I I just got this, so <laughs> looking forward to checking it out. That's one of my prized possessions. I have a. I think there's a new Blu-ray. Uh, set of that but it was like hard to find i think it might i don't know if it's in the uk or something i haven't got around to, but i have that so it's it's all i really need nice all right so uh, between that and trick-or-treat i mean and the theater that's near me for regal is like smack dab right between me and hunter so like i'm hoping that i can meet him for those um at least one of those good luck scheduling that have you ever seen dawn of the dead uh well, I think I saw like the one of the relatively recent remakes of it. Um, it was a Zack Snyder remake. I don't know if it was even that. I don't. It was. I feel like it was like '90s or early 2000s, maybe. I recently yeah. started watching some of these on uh, Shutter because they had like a row of them, and uh, I think it was Return of the Living Dead oh, is the oh. one where like that's it's like kind of the um, punk '80s kids, right? And like the yeah, funeral yeah. home. It was fucking amazing. That That's was one of my favorite movies. Oh, I loved it. Like, I was taking notes after a minute because I was like, I honestly didn't think I cared all that much for, like, zombie movies because I feel like, so. you know, I feel like, I guess for a while there were a bunch that were very much the same. But then I was watching this and I was like, holy shit, aerosolized human remains. Motherfucker smacks that. Just, it was incredible. I, I absolutely love that one. Yeah, in my top 10 horror movies of all time would be both Dawn of the Dead and Return of the Living Dead. Yeah. 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 They're brilliant for totally different reasons, but brilliant. I need to go back and watch the original. And Return Dead. of the Living Dead is really like where the fast zombies first kind of showed yeah. up. I yeah. love when they're, when they're like, send more EMTs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just ordering more snacks. Send more paramedics. I like when she's uh, she's stripping on the grave and some guy in the background, you hear him yell, she's taking off her clothes again. Let's get some light over here. <laughs> Always cracks me up. <laughs> all right. So that's relatively pretty good news. So that's Not all bad. the news that's fit the film. All right. Here we go. We have such sights to show you. All right, Laurel, you get to go first. What did you, okay. you watch or read? I am so proud of myself because I actually did consume physical media. Wow. This time. I watched Chernobyl, the um, the miniseries, the HBO oh, miniseries. I've heard good things. Oh, my God. God, it was ridiculously good. I've always felt like the whole like radiation thing is just really viscerally scary, you know, because it's it's like you can't fucking see it. And then you're already dying by the time you know anything's happened to you. Um, and I didn't I don't think I, I really didn't know all that much about Chernobyl. But yeah, I'd heard really good things about it. One of my coworkers lent me the um, the like disc set and I just like plowed through it in the weekends. Holy shit. It was so well done. And I really actually really enjoyed, they had, um, they didn't have that many extras in the version that I was watching. And I kind of wish they had because I was very interested in the making of this thing, but they did have a little extra that showed how they transferred like this one uber, uber creepy scene um, from the screenplay to the, you know, to the screen. And it was really eye opening for me. And I'm, I mean, I'm sitting there taking notes on that because I'm just like, yeah, I mean, this is how you convey dread without dialogue you know, and, and in almost total darkness, it's just every element of it was, man, it was really good. I know like as soon as I finished it, I ordered a couple books on the subject. It's, it's really, really excellent. And uh, I mean that guy, yeah. So many of these guys are so fucking punchable, but you, but I mean, you can really see like based on the way that the Soviet Union was set up, you can really see exactly why this happened the way that it happened, but it, it's, it's absolutely, oh, it's terrifying but it's really, really good. I did not watch this when it came out and I don't know why. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. I've heard great things. People go it's, nuts over it. It's it's good and it's one that I would recommend watching maybe when you have like the weekend to plow through it because you're not going to want to stop and you, you're also, I think it works better if you don't try like 
takes spaces between it because like the last episode is the trial and they're putting all the pieces together for you. And I feel like, like, this is one of the few things I've watched in recent years that I like threw my phone aside and wouldn't even look at it. Cause I was like, I don't, I don't want to miss any of it. So that's one I would really, really not recommend. It's really excellent. Now Colin in the chat is wondering if we have any Chernobyl uh, drinking words. <laughs> oh God, there, there would be so many, but, uh, and none of them apparently comes to mind at the moment. How many episodes is that? Five. Oh, Five. nice. About an hour each? Uh, yeah, probably close to that. Ron yeah, Ronkin. That's it. There, there's the measurement. That's your drinking word. Ron Ronkin, which I'm pronouncing wrong, I'm sure. IMDb Dark. says five and a half hours total. That's probably counting credits on each episode. Yeah, that's it could be. 9.4 rating. That's like Shawshank Redemption levels of love. That's crazy. It's well, it was funny because I brought it back to my coworker and like we were talking about it and like everyone in the vicinity were like, are you talking about Chernobyl? It was, I mean, just everybody had the same opinion of it. It was, I don't know. It's, I, I and I would, I mean, I guess they probably don't technically consider it horror, but as far as like the human like element life. of it, oh yeah. And it is really disgusting. I mean, because, but what's cool is it's not, it's not gratuitous, which I don't actually have a problem with gratuitous shit, you know, in, in its place. But in this, it was like every element of it was like, this is us showing you the the legitimate human cost, you know, of all of the shit that happened. And yeah. the people that have to keep making decisions to basically sign their own death warrants, it's, it's nuts. Melting face guy. That's right, Mike. There you go. <laughs> That's the drinking word for it. Comrade. We'd be drunk in no time. <laughs> I got to check this out. I don't know why I never watched it. I remember when it came out and everybody went insane and I just. Yeah, I kind of forgot about it. I guess, if you, I mean, because I don't have HBO. Um, and so that's why I hadn't. And so I hadn't really made an effort to to seek it out. But I ordered the disc as soon as I brought it back to the guy I work with. Because it's, I mean, it seems weird to be like, it, you know, immediately I wanted to rewatch it. But I did just because I felt like, I don't know. Yeah, it, it was, it was really good. Nice. Cool. All right, Jason, what you got? Well, it's uh, spooky season, as if I don't watch horror movies year round. But I asked my wife what she wanted to watch, pick any horror movie. And I don't know why she said it, but I'm glad she did because it's one of my favorite horror movies. And it's The Ninth Gate. And the amount of oh, people yes. who have not seen this movie. Me. me. You still haven't I seen it? Still haven't seen it. I feel like I mention it once a year on here. I freaking love this movie. It's quirky. It's strange. It's about a book detective searching for a legitimate copy of a book that will supposedly raise the devil. It's Johnny Depp trying to play an older guy like they spray painted gray on his hair like he's me. And uh, But it's so good. Um, it's just got this... I, I think quirk is probably the right way to put it. It's a strange movie. And it's just this dude going around talking to people about this book and crazy shit's happening. And people were following him and um, people were starting to wind up dead around him. And it's all because he just wants to look at this goddamn book. Like, that's all it is. And just really cool shit happens in this. It's a little long, but honestly, there's very little I would take out, except maybe a couple CG shots, because this came out in 99. And some of the uh, CG shots aren't great. But otherwise, ah, it's just so good. I love it. Yeah, agreed. This is one of my husband's favorite movies. Oh, really? Yeah, that's that's one that we have. He he showed it to me early on in dating, and and we've you know had it for a while, and it's yeah, it's just very enjoyable. I'm glad and I you, think you're, I think atmospherically, you're right. Like spooky season, I think it's appropriate for that. Yeah, I think so. I can think I gotta put this on the list for because I keep looking for something I haven't seen yet. So I for, kind of forgot about this one. It's it's long, and it's not your typical horror movie. But um, I think it's because it's long. It's one of those ones that like if it's like nine thirty. I'm like, oh, what should I watch it? Nah, too late for this one. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I get MVP this week and <laughs> self voted. All right. I am. Uh, There's only three of us this week, though. So I am maybe. freaking questioning life choices at this point because I'm watching this movie and I'm going, well, I am only watching this movie because I do this podcast. Okay. And the movie in question is Amityville in the Hood. On Tubi. Oh. I love it already. 
Oh, I thought, I thought that was a joke actually in the tweet. I, I really thought that was a joke. How did you not get to watch this in your Amityville? I think it's rather new. I don't think it was out. Right? Like, uh, yeah. Now, Amityville, is it in the hood or the hood? In the, not the. Duh. I mean, <laughs> well, Leprechaun is Leprechaun in the hood. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I was, I actually looked, purposely looked. I was like, ah, <laughs> oh, I feel like that was a misstep there because <laughs> that would have been the obvious choice. Um, yeah, 2021. Yeah, so this, I was already done. Thank on the God. plus side, Ooh. and why I picked it last night, it's an what? hour and 10 minutes. 1.8 on IMDb. That might be the lowest score I've ever seen. I was going to say, I don't think I've seen anything lower than that. My no. God. Jesus Christ. I'm going to be 100% honest with you people. Afterwards, I thought to myself, why did I watch this whole movie? I could have just turned it off, said, oh, I started to watch it, but I fell asleep and done some sort of Hunter Shea dance. Um, or I could have just pretended that I watched it after watching half of it. But no, I watched the whole damn thing and it was the longest hour in 10 minutes. <laughs> wow. Now, the, the premise, first of all, Jason, you watched like a lot of Amityville. Was there one like called Clown House or something like that? Dollhouse. Dollhouse. There, what did it involve clowns? Man, I don't remember. You know how because many shitty movies I watched during COVID? In I don't think afterwards, so. I, I watched a, a, a couple of reviews of this to see what other people thought. And somebody was saying that, like, I don't know if it's like 20 minutes of this movie is actually reused footage from one or two other Amityville movies. And I think the best gore <laughs> scenes. Was from thing, something that might have been called either Dollhouse or, or a Clown House. It involved clowns. Um, I don't remember clowns in any of the Amityville movies, but when talking to Chad, I also realized once that I had seen a movie I was already describing I wish they'd made. And <laughs> they'd already made it, and I had watched it like two weeks before. <laughs> so, uh, so they re reused 20 minutes of footage like I, I at this point i have so much respect for this director like so much respect for that level of giving no fucks well it's this amateur movie that kind of feels like i would say a college movie but everybody's like in their 40s um oh i definitely like it the premise is that the amityville house is like close you know bought the, the bank hat owns it now but like squatters or whatever there's people in there growing weed and doing devil kind of stuff. And then this like cursed weed makes its way out to Compton. Cursed and sold weed. on the street. And then people are killing each other because of the devil weed. That's um, the only connection to Amityville? No, but they, they show the house and like there's a policeman in Amityville that calls a guy in California to help him with the case. And there so much of this movie is those two guys talking on the phone. Oh, and God. just going back and forth for like 10 minutes. <laughs> um, and one guy is like literally sitting like this, like, <laughs> off the, like and the, the main cop guy who really doesn't come into the movie till later, he had like, you know, a, a cuff of his shirt, you know, so he's like this, so the, it's down a little bit. And he had like a open sore like <laughs> on his wrist. I was like, you know, was he doing yard work and cut himself? Or <laughs> was that, just, and it wasn't part of the story? He just showed up to the set. Like that? Like, this guy was just banged up. Um, what the hell? I, I mean, I think you know what you're getting if you go into this. So if you're, if you're game, I, I lay down the gauntlet. I go for it. I don't see how I can not at this juncture, like just with, I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm done with the Amityville nonsense. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I think I'd get a part-time job before I had to go decide to go through all those again. There's a lot of really bad rap songs that they play. At, well, of course yeah. that's going to be, I mean, if you, if it's in the hood, that's required. The hood. The hood. The hood. 
There really is a lost opportunity going with the uh, instead of duh. I mean, come on. Now, the um, getting Lutsky into the mix. There's another one that was pay per view, and that's why I didn't watch that one. I think it's like four ninety nine at the moment. That I think we could have as a main feature sometime. It's Amity Villain Space. Is it Tubi? That just sounds like Tubi nonsense. Feels like Tubi. I don't, but you have to pay. So I don't know if you have to pay for anything. In Tubi. Oh, they got, okay. They yeah. got a lot of nerve charging yeah. four ninety nine. If we wait for the show, sure. it may come down. Yeah. Wow. Did you see the cover of this thing? Oh yeah, I saw the trailer. Oh my god! Can't show the trailer. They'll pull us off YouTube. But they spent more money on this than they did on the movie, guaranteed. That's pretty. I mean, I mean, that's money well spent, though. That's wicked. That is a sweet, sweet cover. They're just looking at the uh, the Leprechaun franchise and going, "Well, if they could do it, they could do it." <laughs> Jeez. You know, maybe we should make an Amityville movie. I mean, I'm in. Anybody can do it. There are no rights to the series. So Amityville just... Final Guys. <laughs> yeah. So, what's your incredibly tenuous connection to the original Amityville House? Somebody sends Jason a movie to his P.O. box that at one point was at the Amityville house. Oh, it's it, was George, it was George. It was George Lutz's Amityville house. George Lutz's shot. VCR. That's what it. Yes. Yeah. And it's since been copied over. And it's kind of like the ring, but lamer. In what we happens. We could totally to shoot that in a weekend and charge five dollars for it on Amazon. Yes. Hunter and I aren't that far away. We could get some actual footage of the house. <laughs> Hmm. What? What about the house has been turned into a peep show that Hunter is that's, laughing at? That's what I was going to say. Amityville peep show is more like that's yeah. the one. <laughs> that's that's the one. <laughs> and then he could combine his dream of making that movie with an Amityville. You know, they call it the red light district. What those windows always have red light coming through them. Mm -hmm. I mean, this stuff writes itself. It's too easy. It's too easy. I'm excited. We can definitely. Definitely get at least a 1.8 on IMDb. I think we can. I think we can. I think we get a 1.9. We might even break two. It's possible. I don't know. Jesus Christ. Anyway, depends on how good the peep show is. Is my guess. But. Uh, I, I again, I unabashedly dubbed myself MVP this week because of that. I agree. Uh, it, it's hard to describe. You're I would welcome. actually like to see just a crowdsourced. <laughs> Amityville story in the comments like right now they could probably make a story better than any of the last 30 yes. <laughs> uh, alright Laura what else you got oh shit yeah um, let's see so the other thing we've been watching is uh, The Girl in the Mirror which is on Netflix and that's actually pretty good um, it's a Spanish language one um, and I, don't know, I think we're like six episodes in or something, but it's, it's a bunch of kids that uh, survive a horrible bus crash. Um, but it's really, really well done because I feel like with a lot of shows, the bus crash itself would be like it, you know, like they're, they're just survive that and whatever happens in the, in the aftermath. And it's definitely part of it, but it's, it's got some really cool, like sort of historical um, magical type elements and, and, um, and ghosty type scenarios and, I don't know. It's very like there's a lot of twists and turns, but I feel like at this point everything's really been earned. Um, this is and, a series. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. I think it's like nine episodes, maybe. It's it's horror. Mm -hmm. I mean, huh. I guess they call it a thriller, but there's like ghosts and a lot of death and meaning. So works for me. Yeah, I definitely have not heard of this. I have not heard of this at all. You said Netflix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Huh. Yeah, I think Alma is the is the original Spanish language name of it, and then it's there. They've been calling it the girl in, in the mirror. Is it dubbed or subtitled or uh, subtitled? Hmm. There aren't even images on IMDb of this. Really, this is interesting. Really, this That's is cool. quite a find. I, usually, I kind of figured that when once my husband and I get to something, it's probably already been seen by everyone else on the planet because we're significantly behind. We have unearthed something here. Yeah. yeah, that's it's definitely it's good, and I'll have to say I I do have I'm a little bit hard to please with shows that like center around a bunch of adolescents just because it's not really my interest point. Like I don't like reliving, you know. It's not like I'm like oh good a bunch of kids. I'm like hmm. 
but this is just really, I don't know. I, th I think they've done it really well and I don't think that they've dumbed it down at all. Um, you know, for, for the age of the, of the participants, basically. I really like okay. it. I might've checked that out. I'm surprised I haven't heard of it. Hmm. I'm going to put it on my endless queue yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> after the ninth queue. gate. <laughs> <laughs> and Chernobyl. Yes. All right. So I read a book you recommended, Laurel, called Man Fuck This House by Brian. Is yes. Brian yeah. Brian Osmond. Yeah. I had not heard of this and I, I'm a little surprised because I see it has 1800 ratings on Amazon, yeah. which is wow. wild. Yeah. So this, this has been read a lot. This is a really wild book. Uh, it, boy, the third act is just. <laughs> It's insane, but the, I really like his writing style. I've never read him before, and I don't know. He just has a flow to his writing that, um, I don't know, I felt like I wasn't getting lost in description or, you know, um, it didn't feel like he was writing with a, th a thesaurus, which drives me crazy. So he just has a nice flow to his writing, and I really dug it, and it's out there. This is a very different kind of haunted house book. I don't even really want to say much because I don't want to spoil what happens but uh this is definitely worth a read and it's three bucks on kindle i mean it's yeah. nothing and it's 158 pages so you can read it quickly so it's man fuck this house that which is if you search for it on amazon it says man funk this house see i'm looking at it right now on amazon it says fuck but if you go in the search bar i mean it does on mine on the search bar like it pull it says man funk this house but then once you actually pull it up but oh, it's really? I, I, I feel like I should say that, like, although I feel like the title and the concept is a lot of what sells it, it's not at all phoned in. Like, it's not, I don't feel like it, it gives up at that point. You know, like there's, there's actually a story here and there's like, there's a, there's a well thought out story in my opinion. No, I totally agree. I thought it was going to be just bizarro weirdness. Yeah. It wasn't. It was, it was a good story. I really dug it. I dug it enough that I'm going to read more of his stuff. He's got something about elves coming out in either October or November. Oh, you're an angry elf. <laughs> oh, okay. So anyway, check it out. Like I said, three bucks. Well worth the purchase. Great recommendation. Sorry, I always laugh at the angry elf thing because that's what we say to my mom like every time. She's five foot nothing. <laughs> and every time she gets mad, we're like, ooh, you're an angry elf. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I watched another movie called The Good Neighbor from, uh, I think it's 2022, uh, which stars John Reese Myers and uh, Bruce Davison would be the two recognizable people in it. Um, basically, uh, I forget what country they're in, but it's like Austria or something like that. This guy moves there. He's living in his boss's country house, starting to get to know his neighbor. And they go out drinking one night. And uh, on the way home, they accidentally hit a girl and, and kill her and uh, have to cover it up. Um, but then the girl's sister starts to get involved with one of them. So it's kind of a thriller thing that I had read a couple of good reviews on, so I decided to check it out. And it turns out it was just kind of like a cookie-cutter thriller mm. um, that I like dropped a couple of bucks on watching it, and I was like, eh, you know, I think I would have liked this better if this had been on Prime, and I just watched it. Um, it didn't really bring much new, and yeah, you know, eh. So it was a little bit forgettable, but it had some decent performances and some interesting stuff. So, you know, I'd give it like a C plus. It's another one I haven't heard of. And the hmm. funny thing is, is I had seen like one, you know, I'm, when I do the news, I'm scouring the, the websites and stuff like that. I had seen this mentioned in a couple like, oh, you got to see this after I watched it. Then I like looked it up on uh, Rotten Tomatoes and it was much lower than what the one like or two reviews I had seen. There was a much more like, oh, yeah, no, this run of the mill cookie cutter, <laughs> you know, so. It got me through the night, though. If you're looking for something with a mixed group and you're just trying to decide, it's kind of that kind of movie. It's like the Applebee's of, of movies. Yes. 
Um, Jonathan Reese um, Myers, he's in a lot of stuff. You ever see Match Point, the Woody Allen movie with Scarlett Johansson? Tennis movie? Yeah. God, years ago. Well, te- it's kind of a tennis movie. He, he plays tennis, but it's a he has an affair with Scarlett Johansson, and then he ends up murdering her to save his marriage. Hmm. That's it's been so movie. long. I don't know if I've actually seen it or not. It's a great movie. I really like it a lot. <laughs> it's a really young Scarlett Johansson, right? Yeah, but this movie's good. Fifteen years old, I'd say. Okay. I feel like I watched. It, I just don't remember. All right. Yeah, there is another Good Neighbor movie. Chad's bringing up that has James Con. I think we're two kids who live near him are trying to trick him into his house being haunted. I never saw that one. Um, I've never seen that. I feel like okay. the bar for I feel like the threshold for thrillers is really low. So I feel like every time I like read one of the ones that's like really pumped up, everyone like, oh, good, okay. There's never I don't know. A lot of times I'm just not all that excited. And I mean, slap me if you want to, but if I see one more fucking Harlan Coben adaptation of Five Rich People, then I'll let their mm. secrets. I'm just like I just I don't care. Right. This one's one of those ones where you're kind of engaged for a while, and then the closer they get to the end, they start to fumble the ball a little bit, and you're like, oh, they're not going to stick the landing, are they? Hmm. All right. I will not put that on All right. Laurel? Okay, so I have one more. I read um, this, and this is, I think it comes out in October. So I was reading it for blurred purposes, but uh, I read We Are a Legend which is uh, the second um, collaboration between Ward Nerdlow, which is one of Ed Morn's um, pen names, and uh, Darren Kapoff. Um, I don't know if you guys read the first one, Wicked Rex of the West, but that was a lot of fun. So We Are Legend is a mashup of I Am Legend and Gremlins, um, nice. which I, they never say Gremlins, and I don't think that it probably says it anywhere on there for, I'm sure, licensing purposes. Um, but it's it is good. It's gruesome. It is really, really gruesome. Uh, and I'm I am ashamed to say how long it took me to get some of the what in retrospect are really obvious and good references to movie stuff. But it was it was it was really enjoyable. I just keep I don't I don't know how they do it. They they I mean the equivalent of throwing a dart at a wall of what to mash up. I think this one they maybe tweeted out and were like, "What do you guys want to see next?" And and they just threw out some random shit and it was that and it's. It's impressive. It's impressive the ability to do that. Is it post-apocalyptic? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But instead of vampires, it's gremlins. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's a group of kids, and it. But I mean, it's ooh, they write some of the most brutal fucking shit I have read, which I mean makes sense. It makes sense, but it is. I mean, it's it is really good. Um, I can't. I wish I could remember the next one that they're working on, but. It really just at this point, it just does seem like it's like, it doesn't matter. You could throw them anything and it's like golden girls and, you know, fucking Dawn of the Dead. Okay, go. And it would be good. And it would be horror. Did my lights just get brighter behind me? Jesus. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, good. The wiring in my house is in good shape. Haunted. Yeah, I was going to say, sure it's the wiring. Wow. Yeah, they're like super bright. (laughs) (laughs) Shit. It's Stranger Things. (laughs) (laughs) Will uh, is trying to communicate with you. Jason just turns the lights off. For real. <laughs> you got anything, Jason? No, I'm tapped out. I just want to mention, I watched the first episode of the 100 Scariest Moments of All Time on Shudder. So, mm. uh, I don't know how many movies they covered in it. Maybe 10. Um, and basically, they kind of pick a movie... Like it follows was I think the first one, and they give a sort of an overview of it, and then they zoom in on one particular scene, um, and then they have a lot of talking heads. Bria Grant is one of them. Uh, mm-hmm. I think Joe Latriglia, I think his name. He's from Brooklyn Nine Nine. He's one of them. Ah, um, oh, what's his name? Dana Gould. He's a comedian. He is an encyclopedia like knowledge of horror movies. I love listening to him. He's on a couple of them, and there's some other people I hadn't heard of. Oh, uh, what's his name? Candyman. Um, Tony Todd. Tony Todd. He's one of them. 
Nice. And so they'll they'll talk. My favorite was that they finally put Salem's lot in there. Uh and the the scary scene was the the kid at the window. Uh and as Chad and I had sort of agreed like we feel like Salem's lot is probably the scariest vampire movie. And that scene is probably the one that gave kids nightmares, you know, for a generation. I can see that. The other fun thing about this is, you know, you watch, you get reminded of, oh, damn, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. They brought up a couple of movies that I hadn't seen. So, uh, again, as I'm checking off my what should I be watching over the next couple of weeks, I'm taking some notes and uh, getting some ideas. So. I, I don't know if them, I don't know how many how often they're uh, putting them out, but the first one's out. So check it out. I think I saw a schedule somewhere, maybe on Twitter or something, where I, I'm guessing they're building up to Halloween. Yeah, Shutter is doing like the 61 days of Halloween, so I think almost every day something's happening over there. They're putting out just one episode at a time, like like we're animals or something. They're not just doing like a whole fucking series. They've wised up. They know how to keep you. Coming back for more streaming so. shows like we're pilgrims, and it gets people talking like like this. It's true. Spawns podcasts. Mm-hmm. All right, is that everything? I'm I think good. So. Okay, it's time for the main feature. You like scary movies? Uh huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, I don't know. You have to have a favorite. What comes to mind? Okay, this movie, I think it's Salom. Salom? I think. On Netflix, subtitled, it's an African movie. Laurel, you uh, you, you chose this movie? So I did. Please, give us the synopsis, if you would. And have you, you don't have, have to you, wrap it if you don't you want say, to. Have you prepared a rap? <laughs> I, I'm more likely to sing it in, in Disney. <laughs> How are, the, the more creative you get, the better. Damn it. Now I'm trying to think. Okay. So there's three, there's, I, it's, it's hard to, first of all, I fucking suck at synopsizing anything. Um, I I hate doing it every week. So I'm, I'm happy to do it. Okay. There's three hyenas. (laughs) Um, there's, I really didn't, I didn't know what to think of it either. So, so there's the, there's these three guys, they are, uh, liberating this, um, this, this drug kingpin from, are they in Senegal or Gambia? Um, I feel like I heard Senegal at some point, but I don't know if they were there and leaving or is that where they were going or is that where they were coming from? I don't know. That's what, that's what I'm thinking is they were between the two of them. So they're, so they're liberating. Uh, they're, they're being paid by the cartel to pull out this guy. Um, and uh, something happens to their, their transport along the way. They have to stop in the middle and they go to this camp that the, that the main guy is familiar with um, and there's some shit going on there. There's, there's some, there's some past stuff going on and, and some, some danger from, uh, from law enforcement, et cetera. Nice. All right. Well done. What did you think of it? What's your thousand foot view? I loved it. Um, I was really happy to go into it, not really knowing what to expect and it really, really defied my expectations, particularly based on how it starts. Um, you know, you're you're looking at what appears to be kind of a, I don't know if you would call it gangland, but you know, you're you're looking at like drug kills and things like that, and you're thinking there's a lot of brutality going on from these guys, and um, and uh, and I don't know, it's just it's unclear where it's going to go as far as the type of story that it is, and I I really enjoyed it. And on a you know random side note, I, I took like five years of French in high school, so I really was enjoying this because it was reminding me like some of the vocabulary. And I'm sitting down there like, quelque chose, yes. <laughs> so I'm glad you said that. What I don't know what language they were speaking, but I was hearing so much French. Is that just a part of that language? It was no French is um, is a very common spoken language in in certain countries in Africa. I know the Ivory Coast. Um, that's their primary language is French. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's mostly what they were speaking. And then there was oh. another language that I missed what they called it, but, but there was some back and forth in that. Okay. Um, but it was, it was mostly French. 
okay because I, I took a, a bunch of french and not that i paid attention but i was like wow that sounds super familiar and then other parts i wasn't sure if it was a different language or just like i just have lost too much vocabulary I, I, there was definitely there were some instances of another language and it was interesting because it would be interspersed with the conversation of french but i i, I thought that was really i don't know i, I really like that too because i think that's actually how that works um because you know america is like the only country where we only speak one language hmm. yeah yeah i like that how about you jason what did you think uh, I really like this movie. I thought visually it was incredible. I'm just not even the special effects, which were so much better than I would have expected. Um, just the the way it was shot. I mean, he really used the uh, the landscape. Like there's some just incredible vistas behind them, and when they're traveling, and I just I was really blown away by the camera work and the quality uh, of the of the look of it. Uh, writing wise. I thought it was pretty good. I had trouble following some parts and I don't know if it was, I don't know if it's bad writing or the translation wasn't great, which we've had happen on shutter movies a couple times where the translation seems wonky. I didn't know how much it was just cultural differences that I wasn't following. Um, it could have been all three or I, I don't know, but a couple points in the story, I was like, wait, what the heck? What? Um, but I was able to get past that pretty quickly. The beginning was really when I was struggling with, um, the narration, I, I, I wasn't following yes, yeah. very well. Uh, yeah. But once the characters were talking for, I don't know, five, ten minutes, then I could kind of settle it in and I was able to follow it. But I, this was way better than I expected. I, I, I dug it. I liked it as well. I think I liked the first half better than the second, though. I felt like if they never went supernatural, this movie could have been fine. It was like you were saying, like, I don't know. An action movie, I don't know, uh, I don't know the right word for it, drug runner, uh, revolutionary, that kind of genre thing. Uh, I was enjoying it that way. What it takes to kind of turn in the second half, third quarter, whatever, um, to the supernatural, there's a few parts I thought I could, if I pull at the strings here, or I don't know. I'm, I'm not quite as crazy about it in the home stretch as I am with with the rest of the movie. But having said that, I still enjoyed it a lot. Um, yeah. I just there's a few things that kind of they said one thing and then it kind of didn't really what they said didn't wasn't true or whatever. Uh, so I had a couple of problems with that. Um, uh, but overall, I thought it was a very well done. Like I agree with everything you say shot acted well you never see that region of the world beautiful um the the actors were like very interesting looking and the, the um the characters so yeah overall i think it's a really a, a good watch but like i said as we get into it i had a couple of problems with it no i i did too i just i don't know what to complain about because I, yeah, I don't know if it was translation the writing wasn't up to par like i just i don't know like when they were talking about ghosts and stuff i felt like there was some cultural stuff maybe that yeah. i wasn't getting to i think uh, that was the impression i got was there were some references to things that weren't explained that i think that it was like it was like this universally accepted thing like oh this you know, fill in the blank X. Oh, okay. We accept that that's like a thing. Oh, I didn't think they'd been in this region or, or something like that. I felt like that was definitely like a, like a cultural type reference, but I thought it was interesting that they didn't explain it because I mean, it's, it's a movie that's made, you know, in Africa. Um, and yeah, I kind of like, in you know, it's one of those ones where I want to go look it up after the fact and get additional explanation on some of it. Um, so I may not be thinking of all the same things you are, Jason, but I do think some of it is just like cultural, like norms, like, you know, something that maybe most people in a particular culture would know the references. Yeah. I, I definitely got that feeling when they were talking about ghosts and spirits and stuff. I, they were saying names of things and I was like, that means nothing to me. Yeah. 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 But yeah. And to what you were saying, Jack, there were, there were some parts where they were describing like the sounds and the effect on you and sometimes it happened and sometimes it didn't. And so I was like, I don't know if maybe I'm just not getting the dialogue right. I'm not understanding what they were saying correctly, or if it just maybe isn't that well done. I don't know. 
So I, like, I don't really want to bash it because I just I don't know where the disconnect was, how much was me. But I was still so arrested at the way it looked visually that I was just like, yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> the CG like was so much better than I would have expected um, from a yeah. movie that could not have had much of a budget. Like I was really shocked. Yeah. And they kind of ratchet up the tension because, you know, you go from this coup or whatever it was that they they escape from and then they have to ditch the plane and get to that uh, village and then there's kind of a lot going on in that village and who can you trust who you can't and what's who's creeping outside your door and all that kind of stuff that I, th I thought uh, was ratcheting up the tension very well. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, all the stuff with the, the guy running the compound, hotel, yeah, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Basically, every time that guy was in the movie, it just felt a little off to me. Like, kind of right away, I just felt like, this guy's... I don't know. I don't know about this dude. Um, I, I want to mention, too, before I forget, the three main guys who play the... I don't remember what they were called. Hyenas. 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 Three of the most interesting-looking dudes I yes. think I've ever seen on film. The guy with the the mohawk, the black mohawk, and the white beard, yeah. And the dude with the white dreads, uh, and the main guy, like he just the, the red gloves. Was, yeah, I was like, man, these guys look just crazy. I love the them. red gloves, and then the way he switches out, he's like, wait, I have to go look respectable. I'm gonna switch out my my shades for like nerdy like oh, yeah. glasses, like just those specifically like, oh look, I'm very unassuming. Look at me, and I was like, that's actually really effective with, for yeah. some reason. Yeah, and then when they were speaking sign language and stuff, just all of that kind of lent to the visual flair of the movie. It just all kind of... The expression he had on his face the whole time. That mm -hmm. big grin when he's threatening her was just really... Yeah. I thought that was really well done. I would have liked for them to use the fact that the girl was deaf more to help them survive yeah. these things. Yeah. I wanted a little more of that. I mean, yeah, if, I you're having, if you're having something in where it affects you're hearing and you have a deaf girl with you, she should be kicking ass, you know? Yeah. Uh, but that kind of, yeah. I mean, it wasn't bad, but I just, it was a cool idea. I would have liked to see more of it. That's all. I didn't even know this movie existed. And then I opened up shutter and there it was in the featured section. So I kind of, I, I'm glad I went in like nude on this. I mean, I had no idea what this was about. <laughs> Yeah. No, me either. I think I messaged you Sunday and said, "What? What the hell's our main feature?" I don't yeah. remember if we said. You said and then it uh, was just like you said; it was so much better than I expected it to be. Yeah, yeah. I was sitting down to watch it last night with my wife, and she's like, "What are we watching?" I was like, "An African horror film." She was like, "What?" Like, I, I've literally never even heard of it. So we were both I, pleased. I might have passed it by actually if Hunter hadn't you know, giving me like the, the list of like, Hey, these are some of the newer ones. Um, just because like from initial glance, it looked like, like a gang, like violence type movie. And that's not exactly my thing. You know, it just, it depends on how it's done. Um, but yeah, it just, I, I am really glad like you, I, I went in without like knowing much about it. And cause the blurb is not super descriptive either. Um, and then so, yeah. I watched the trailer later. And the trailer almost gives it like a Quentin Tarantino feel. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. That's a really good way to describe it. And I think yeah. it's misleading because it's not as like, I don't know, funny or as wacky as a Tarantino movie, but the trailer makes it feel that way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The beginning, the way it was kind of shot a little bit, I thought maybe they were going for a Tarantino thing, but then it really didn't. After that, it really didn't feel like it. I do want to know where can I get that powder they blow in everyone's oh face that makes you pass God, out. I wanted it too. Mr. Yeah, Fuji that's one of my main Mr. notes. That's one of my main notes. Is like I want that fucking powder. I just want to like at night just, just, go just take it. it into the grocery store and just throw it in people's faces. <laughs> like, why are you leaving your cart in the middle of the aisle? <laughs> all right, so I think we all recommend this movie. Want to get into spoilers? Sure. Spoiler alert. Get out of here if you don't want to be spoiled. Okay. I, the the biggest nitpick I had with the movie was there's one guy in the compound that kind of knows what's going on and is warning everybody. Like, he's the one that tells them that they need the headphones and stuff like that. 
And he basically says, like, your guns and knives are going to be useless. And then they proceed to fight and kill the ghosts with their guns and knives. <laughs> yeah, they were um, definitely and, not useless. <laughs> yeah, so in the, I, the um, I don't know, the ratio of the using the headphones and stuff to how, how much they could have done more with that, I thought that maybe it was a little lacking, but like right there, the guy gives a big warning about the guns and then all they do is shoot a bunch of ghosts. <laughs> Although I, so here's the thing. I don't think what they were shooting was ghosts. I think that there were two separate threats going on there. That was my understanding oh. because you had whatever the main spirit slash gods were that, um, what was his name? Om Omar. Oh, who was the, the, the weird guy who ran the compound? Um, oh, yeah. I mean, Remington is what he ends up calling him. But um, so I'll just call him Remington. I can remember what his name is. Uh, but who, you know, those were the entities or whatever that he like had the deal with that he was keeping at bay. Um, and then they mentioned something else that I got the impression were more human, um, not necessarily villagers, but that they were more of a human element. And those were like the buzzy fly group things yeah, yeah and that's why like they because they said at some point they want or they're committed to you hearing their voice or or you letting in this you know this other larger entity and so that's why the guns and knives essentially worked against them because they were they were human and they were drawing whatever that was around them but that was a little bit confusing um because yeah like and that's Jason, I sort of feel like what you were talking about too, with like, it's, you know, this reference to, okay, this is a God and this is a, you know, a, a villager type, some, you know, something like that. And also I feel like that exchange happened so quickly. I, I missed oh, probably some of the importance of it. Um, so that was my impression of what was going on there. Um, but yeah, it's funny. Cause I don't even think I noticed that um, that sort of gap there, as far as like them not really using what they set up with the, you know, with the five senses, they, cause you're right. They did. They set that up as though this is the main threat. This is what they'll do to you. And then nothing ever really came of that. No, it really, what, what one or two people died when they didn't have the headphones on. That was, that was about it. And it didn't seem related. Um, like they, I wanted to know what happened with Felix. Like what the fuck was moving around in his stomach? Because that was like, he was the first one to oh, die. Yeah. And like, you see this that. thing moving around there. And I'm figuring it's going to bust out of him like alien and nothing. And they don't even say anything about it. No one's like, wow, what the fuck was that crazy thing moving under his skin? I almost feel like, I think maybe that it was a writing thing and not necessarily a bad writing thing. I think maybe it was a poor revision or a poor cut having to do with uh, you know, once they were on set or whatever, okay, we need to cut X part because we don't have the space for it or we don't have the time for it or whatever. And it didn't necessarily get stitched back together appropriately. Could be it. I, I have no idea. But there were definitely some gaps that I was not following. Just like when they find the boys mm. uh, in the in the one building and they ask him what he was doing for them. And he said that he was using them to bribe a spirit or a demon or something. But then that was the end of it. And I was like, wait, what? I want to hear more like to do what, like, what do we, you know, just, I'd like a little more fleshed out in some of it. I think they were supposed to be part of what, whatever his deal was, however he was keeping these gods at bay. I think they were sacrifices for that, but I wasn't sure how that played into his role. The, you know, the main guy, like where he'd but obviously weren't they like training to them to be like, like the equivalent of Hitler youth. Like, Oh, like mercenaries, like mercenaries. Yeah, because like they had the his brand on them, like like the main character guy in the red gloves. Yeah. So I thought that like he's the kid who escaped, becoming, you know, what indoctrinated into that. Well, I, I thought that too, but then the guy literally said he was sacrificing them to whatever. Yeah. So I was not quite following. <clears throat> I thought for sure they were going to be ghosts. Like when he opens that door in what is an otherwise completely abandoned village and there's a bunch of kids, I really thought they were all going to be, they were just like ghosts of his prior victims or something. So it was They really missed an opportunity here because they could have made that building the Amityville house. And <laughs> then this could have been an Amityville movie. 
you know, it's, it's oh my god, there's kids in this house. Amityville in Senegal. Yes. And they 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 would have just lost an immediate five points on. on <laughs> I also didn't understand the boys get out of the, the building mm-hmm. and just run away and they're not bothered by the ghost things, the the right. shit with the bugs on them. They were just fine. I didn't understand that either. Why did See, yeah. yeah. I think you're a more discriminating viewer than I am. I feel like okay. I was so take like I was so surprised by the spirit by by the supernatural elements of it. That that I just sort of went along with everything. I didn't ask a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's it's almost like a because we're talking about the movie, I'm bringing it up because if I had just watched this movie, I would have enjoyed it. I would have that would have stuck out of me like oh, I, I I didn't quite understand that. Uh, what was that? But uh, you know, three weeks later, if I saw somebody who was like, oh, that's a pretty good one on Shutter. You should check it out. You know, yeah. like but because we're having a conversation, I'm bringing it up. Yeah. I, I'm always like this. I'm always discerning, particularly when it comes to the writing stuff. Probably just because it's I write, but uh, you know, like I said, I I loved it visually so much that I was like, probably being more forgiving than I typically am with lower budget horror movies because I was just like, this looks amazing. It did look amazing, and like I said, if these guys made just a straight gun runner movie in this yeah. vein, I'd, I'd sign up tomorrow. I, I would now that I've seen it. Yeah, I would. Um, and I, part of what sold it for me too was was the way that they had the relationships between the characters. I loved that it turned out that the hyenas were like, they weren't necessarily like, oh, they're nothing but good guys. Like they're obviously doing some fucked up shit. But you go in with the impression that they've just slaughtered this entire village to get this one guy out and that they're totally soulless. And it's the complete opposite of that. But I love when she's talking to um, you know, the, the Mohawk guy about it. And he's like pissed that she's pinned him down as a good guy. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that infuriates him, but that the connection between the three of them when they're getting ready to go out, you know, and then when they lose the the older guy, it was just really, I don't know. It wasn't sappy. It was just very real and, and kind of touching. And, and I don't know, that was, and the, and the fact that once they realized, like, they were pissed at him for bringing them there on purpose. But when they realized what had happened to him, it was very much a like, hey, man, that was fucked up. I'm really sorry. And that ability to just have that conversation, I don't know. I, I really liked that aspect of it. I liked the characterization very much. Me too. Absolutely. The characterization and the casting worked perfectly mm-hmm. for me. And yeah, I liked when I found out you found out they were kind of anti-heroes. I, I dug that. They weren't just complete pieces of shit yeah so, yeah and also was- kind of the way the story unfolds you know they're in this coup they're getting the guy out the plane crashes why did the plane crash what's up with the village what's up what's the motivation behind everything like it takes you on a journey and it keep it keeps mm-hmm. you interested it doesn't kind of like stagnate at all no. yeah 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 core of the story is good I, I like all that it was just when kind of the Getting lost in the weeds a little bit with the details. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. And that right. initial, we're talking about with the initial narration, I can I definitely see that like being lost in it. But one of the things that I did note initially when he's like going out into the water, like in the very like opening, you know, part of it, when mm-hmm. he's, when he gets out there and starts moving fast and struggling, it was such an eerie fucking scene to me. That was really creepy. So that yes. Absolutely. Everything in it was just shot so, so well, man. I, I can't say that enough. All right. Well, I think that's three thumbs up. Yep. I'm done. Good choice there, Laurel. Thank you. I was given three to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> By the guy who's not even here. Yes. Accurate. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll figure out what we're going to do next week, but um, I think that might be the Tim Meyer week. So keep an eye on Twitter and we'll keep you posted. Oh, it's going to be some piece of shit. Oh, yeah. God. Oh. <laughs> All I right, watch and, enough of those. <laughs> I know. Anything else before we get it? We call it a night. I'm done. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye.